It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. Welcome to the show. We're going to start things off by telling you about the Blade Show. It wrapped up last weekend in Atlanta. It's put on by the folks at Blade Magazine and builds itself as the world's largest, most important knife show where some one thousand exhibitors from more than 20 countries display their knives and knife-related items for three glorious days where the art of fine cutlery is celebrated. The show also features Blade University knife seminars, knife auctions, custom knife awards, celebrity appearances, and much more. Again, make plans to head to Atlanta next June for the Blade Show. Speaking of knives, they gave out some awards during the Blade Show and the coveted Knife of the Year Award for 2017 goes to the Italian-made Lion Steel SR11 folding knife. The best foreign-made knife was the Crossbones folding knife from Columbia River Knife and Tool, an Oregon-based company who has its knives made overseas. The affordable $99 knife was designed by Jeff Park in Hawaii. It's called the Crossbones because it looks a little bit like a dog bone, but it's a knife. Finally, the American-made knife of the year, you gotta love that one, is the Kranos Frame Lock Flipper made by Spartan Blades, a North Carolina company formed by two retired U.S. Army Green Berets. Congratulations to Spartan Blades and to a number of other U.S. companies that had award-winning knives recognized in this knife show of all knife shows. This week on America Outdoors Radio, we'll be talking about a hot conservation issue with Lan Tawney, the CEO of Backcountry. Country hunters and anglers. President Donald Trump has ordered a review of some 27 national monuments created on land and sea since 1996, and the Department of Interior wants to hear from you about it. Why is this important? Because this input will help decide what happens to these monuments for hunters, anglers, and outdoors enthusiasts like you to enjoy. After that, we are taking you back to the Kenai Peninsula in Alaska. This time, our guest is Cindy Smith. She owns Riverhaven Cabins. They're located right on the Kenai River. They're a lot more affordable than you think they would be, and she'll tell you why staying at the Riverhaven Cabins is not only a great way to have a base camp for salmon and trout angling, but also for anyone wanting to experience the natural beauty of Alaska near Cooper Landing. We've got a couple of really interesting discussions about boats, motors, and accessories for you this week, too. We'll get a chance to talk with Tyler Anderson. He is the owner of Tacoma Boat Sales in Washington, and he is the only certified master technician for Honda Outboard Motors in the entire western United States. In other words... He is your repairman of last resort west of the Rockies when it comes to your Honda boat motor. And Tyler will tell you about some of the far-off places his customers are found. Chuck Ciccarelli is the other boating guy we'll be talking to. He's the owner of Fish Fighter Products out of Idaho. And his company specializes in making fishing gear that will hold up in some very rough waters. Our subject today, rod racks, why you need them and what kind will work best for you. We've got outdoors news about a very, very rare game fish found in one of our Rocky Mountain states. How you can become the 2017 Florida Lionfish King or Queen. And advice about the right way to hold a largemouth bass for a picture the next time you catch a whopper. Last, but certainly not least. We'll get a chance to talk to fishing legend Buzz Ramsey about that spinner that has been catching trout and all sorts of other freshwater fish for decades, the Warden Rooster Tail. Buzz is a hoot to talk to, and I suspect you and I will both learn a few things during this chat towards the end of the show you aren't going to want to miss. And with that, let's talk conservation and learn more about why you want to weigh in about the future of our national monuments. Next on America Outdoors Radio, it's time to talk about a conservation issue, specifically an order by President Donald Trump to review 
27 national monuments that have been established since 1996. Most of these monuments are located in the western United States. A few are actually located in the ocean. And after this review, the boundaries of some of these monuments, perhaps even the existence of some of these monuments, can change. With us here to tell us more about this issue is Lan Tawney. He is the CEO of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, a national organization based in Missoula, Montana. Land, great to have you back on the show. John, it's always a pleasure. So, Land, tell us more about these reviews and why these national monuments are important to hunters and anglers across the United States. Yeah, so I think, you know, first thing I would say is that, you know, this is all stems from an act called the Antiquities Act that has been, you know, used by presidents on both sides of the aisle. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt is really who kicked it off. Um, and, you know, it's been used to protect just really fish and wildlife habitat and then the opportunities that come with them. You know, I think that it's been proven out that these monuments, you know, they protect some of the best of the best. And, you know, we're not creating any more wild land. And so, you know, these, these are a very small percentage of what the overall public estate is. And so it, it just makes sense, I think, to uh, protect um, what we have because we're not making any more of it. Some of these areas are located in, in California. You've got bigger ones like the Upper Missouri River Breaks National Monument in Central Montana. And then you've got some really, really big ones like uh, the Hanford National Monument in Washington State and the Bears Ears National Monument. Monument that covers a million plus acres and over 2,000 square miles. Question for you Do you really need all of this country, especially when you're talking about Bears Ears? Do we need all of it, or should some of this be pared down so that other interests can take advantage of it? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing I would say is that, you know, these monuments have been created by, you know, a lot of movement on the ground. I mean, you mentioned Berryessa in California. Um, That was, you know, years of collaboration that included, you know, the Blue Ribbon Coalition, so ATV users and hunters and others really come up with a solution. And so this isn't, you know, like some big thing that happens out in Washington, D.C. in a vacuum. Uh, The thing I would say is that, you know, the Antiquities Act, again, has been used you know, by presidents since its inception. And, you know, any kind of tinkering with that act doesn't make sense. And and this review is really unprecedented. It's never been done before. And and so you start to take away the integrity of the Antiquities Act. You know, this can start to be that many of these get rescinded and then put back into place. And, you know, this is water that's already under the bridge. And, and we really feel that, you know, that, that these monuments need to kind of stay the way they are. And then that we need to be active and think about, you know, how we designate them as they go forward. Here's another question for you. When it comes to some of these national monuments, how accessible are they to hunters and anglers that listen to the show? And I guess we'll start off with one of them up in your neck of the woods, the Upper Missouri River Breaks National Monument. Is that one in particular that hunters and anglers can really take advantage of? You know, uh, John, I appreciate you bringing that one up. It's one of the Most phenomenal places uh, to hunt elk and big mule deer uh, here in the state of Montana. It's a very coveted tag. You can also hunt bighorn sheep there. But again, it's this kind of place that, you know, it's still there. It really looks and feels like it did when Lewis and Clark went through. And and think about, you know, those opportunities that are dwindling. Um, This is a very special place. And and like I said, it's one of the most coveted places to hunt here in Montana. And, uh, you know, it's proven itself out as, as a great place. All right, we're starting to run low on time here, Land. Uh, but if folks want to weigh in during this comment period, how do they go about doing it so that the Department of Interior hears their voice and knows how they feel about it? Oh, that's great. Uh, and thanks for that question, John. Yeah, you can go to backcountryhunters.org. I've got a simple place for you to submit um, your comment there. And I would say that, you know, these are our public lands. They belong to all Americans. And so you definitely have, you know, all your listeners have a stake in how these lands are managed and, uh, and you know, what they do for hunting and fishing. So I encourage everybody listening to, again, go to backcountryhunters.org and we'll make it easy for you. It's your land, folks, and these national monuments are a place where you can access them for hunting, for fishing, for hiking, for wildlife watching, and more. If you care about them, go to backcountryhunters.org. That's backcountryhunters.org, the website for the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Look for the link where you can comment on the Antiquities Act on this review and do so. Make your voice heard. Land, always a pleasure to have you on America Outdoors Radio. John, that's a pleasure for me as well, and I hope you're getting outside.
Whether commercial or recreational, Barrett Marine Company has an aluminum vessel to meet your needs. From the Kraken series of unsinkable aluminum tenders to our wide beam 2385 Ocean Pilot House with commercial strength, all aluminum construction and seating for six adults, or the 32-foot Ocean SF, perfectly balancing heavy-use commercial quality and low-maintenance comfort to extend your time on the water, think Barrett Marine Company. Find us on Facebook at Barrett Marine Co. That's Barrett with two T's, Marine CO. Invasive species are organisms that are non-native to an ecosystem. They outcompete native species and reduce the quality of our resources. We can all prevent the spread by following the simple clean, drain, and dry steps. Clean all watercraft, trailers, and outdoor equipment. Drain all water from boat live wells, motors, ballast tanks, and bilges. And lastly, thoroughly dry all equipment and gear. Do your part to preserve our amazing outdoor heritage for future generations. Oregon's Tillamook Bay is considered the greatest fishing experience on the West Coast for fall Chinook salmon and winter steelhead and Dungeness crab is plentiful. Five major rivers connect with the ocean on the Tillamook Coast. It's not unusual to snag a 40 to 50 pounder. Go out in a boat or stand on a riverbank or dock. Try fishing from a dory boat and experience the thrill of a beach launch and landing. Use spinners, sand shrimp or salmon eggs to lure them. The fish will line up to grab your bait. Go to TillamookCoast.com fishing to find guides and places to stay. Luth AR is the home of the Modular Buttstock Assembly, or MBA for short. Not only do we make modular buttstocks for your AR-15 rifle, we'll help you choose the MBA that's right for you. We also offer parts and accessories to customize your AR. If you're looking for a quality MBA that weighs less and costs less, the Luth AR MBA is for you. Find out more at luth-ar.com. That's luth-ar.com. We're back with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and we are taking you to Alaska, which is appropriate because this portion of the show is sponsored by the Alaska Sporting Journal. It covers fishing, hunting, and all sorts of adventures you can have in America's last frontier. Look for it on a newsstand near you. We are heading to the Kenai Peninsula. We're talking with Cindy Smith. She owns River Haven Cabins in Cooper Landing, Alaska. Cindy, welcome to the show. Hi, John. So, Cindy, River Haven Cabins, it's in Cooper Landing, and your cabins are right, I mean right on the Kenai River where everybody's going salmon fishing. Tell us about your two cabins and your chalet that you have for rent. Well, actually, I now have four cabins. I built a new one. They range in size from a two-bedroom house, and then there's a two-bedroom cabin, the chalet, and then a smaller cabin for guests that are on a smaller budget. The property is on the riverfront. They're log cabins. The three larger ones have fully equipped kitchens. There's satellite TV in all of them now and Wi-Fi. Well, that sounds awfully darn comfortable. And how many does each one sleep? I'm sure the chalet sleeps the most, but going from the most to the least, uh, how many can can each accommodation handle? Well, the, the least, of course, all of them will sleep at least four, but, you know, a couple can come. Sometimes a couple will even take the larger cabin because they just want more room. The most they could sleep would be eight people. Wow. Well, plenty of room for a group to come on up and fish with you. Can folks fish right from the cabins, or do your guests use other options in terms of uh, going to some other public access points or using guides? Mm-hmm. Most people fish downriver about four miles at the confluence of the Russian River, which is a clear mountain stream that meets the Kenai River because it, it's an extremely productive fishing area. It's shallow water, and the fish migrate up that river to lay their eggs. And so most people do drive down four miles and fish down there simply because they can really catch their limit of the day much easier. You can fish from the bank in front of my cabins. Most people don't. Sometimes trout fishermen will fish out there in August and September when the trout starts picking up. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the fishing because June is pretty much crazy time for king salmon. How long does the king salmon fishery last? When do the silvers come up? Well, actually, June in the area of my cabins is the best fishing time for the sockeye salmon, which are the red salmon. And that river opens, I believe, June 11th, well, like at midnight. So kind of the night of the 10th, starting on the 11th, and then 
from there on, it's just nonstop. The reds come then, and then in July, there's a second run of the red salmon. And, of course, kings are still coming, but you don't fish those in Cooper Landing. You have to go downriver about 45 miles uh, on a drive to catch the kings. Also, the silver salmon come in in August, and they they continue on through late August and then early September, and then, of course, the world-renowned trout fishery there. All right. Well, thanks for spreading that out for me. I actually didn't quite understand different portions of the river, different fisheries. So that is great to know. Now, I know that folks that stay with you in River Haven cabins, primarily they are fishing, but there's lots of other things to do too, isn't there? Yes, there are quite a few things. Cooper Landing is just a beautiful mountain area. It has that the great Skelac Lake down the road, which is beautiful glacier-fed lake. Kenai Lake itself is like a fjord. Um, It's fabulously beautiful if you can take a boat ride up there. We also have scenic river rafting. A lot of people do that. They have short ones for those on a budget that that last about two, two and a half hours. They also have full day ones that will go down through the canyon, give you a little more white water and out onto Skelac Lake. There's a guy that does horseback riding. There's kayaking on the lake now. You know, of course, the fishing. And then if you can afford it. A lot of people do the fly-out bear viewing and also glacier viewing. So it's great. City of Seward is only 45 miles away. You can drive in there and do ocean fishing. You can go to the Sea Life Center, Kenai Fjords Tours, hike up to the Harding Ice Field, which is fantastic. You can also drive down to Soldotna and Kenai in 45 miles. So yes, a lot to do. Tons of hiking trails. The Chugach National Forest is there. So the Forest Service maintains trails and then also the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge. So there's, if you're really into hiking, there's gentle trails and there's some super steep ones. If you get to the top, you can see the volcanoes across the inlet. Super, super place to visit. Well, I'll tell you what, it sounds like River Haven Cabins is certainly a great base camp for an Alaskan adventure. So folks, whether you want to just fish or take in all of these other great activities, go to riverhavencabin.com. Cindy, one other question I've got for you is the rates for your cabs and chalet, very reasonable for Alaska, especially for what you get. Why don't you share your rates with our listeners? Well, I have rates kind of for every need. Um, I have a smaller cabin that does not have a full kitchen. Uh, It has a mini fridge, microwave, coffee pot. And right now my website is outdated. I'm in the process of getting it updated. So the price for that one is $140 for two people. And then they range up as they get larger or closer to the river. Uh, the chalet is 170 a night. The brand new cabin, which isn't even on my website yet, is a two-bedroom cabin. It starts at 200 a night, and then the larger house is 250 a night, and then, again, that's for two people. If extra people come along, it's $20 per extra person, so easily figured out. So there's, you know, a, a price for every budget there. Oh, there sure is. And folks, again, you're going to be hard-pressed uh, to find rates lower than this when it comes to staying in Alaska. And that's why staying at River Haven Cabins and enjoying a do-it-yourself Alaska fishing experience makes a lot of sense, especially if you're on a budget. One last question before we go, Cindy. Any more openings for 2017, or are we talking about booking for next year at this point? Actually, I do have some dates left. I had a couple cancellations uh, this year. I do have some of next year booked, mostly the, the best fishing times in the last half of July. The last half of every month is always booked first because that's kind of when the different runs of fish come in, June, July, August, and September. But so there's always some openings left if you're not there strictly for fishing in the first two weeks of the month. And again, also, if you have a cancellation like I did, there can be even hot fishing times available. So you just have to give me a call and see. Uh, again, I have people that come all the way through the end of September. Sometimes those trout fishermen love to come in even October, early October, which I think it's kind of crazy because sometimes we have snow, but there are diehard fishermen, trout fishermen that love to come then. I understand completely. And I'm guessing some of those people are fishermen. They're steelhead fishermen from other parts of the world because steelhead anglers are crazy when it comes to fishing in the cold. I- yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Cindy, we've got to go. But folks, again, the website to go to, riverhavencabin.com. You'll find the phone number there. Give Cindy a call. See if there's any openings this year that are going to fit your schedule or 
Book now for next year. Whether you want to go after the famed sockeye run, if you want to go after the kings, if you want to go after the silvers, if you want to go after the trout, if you want to take in some of these great adventures that Cindy told you about, the website again, riverhavencabin.com. That's riverhavencabin.com. Cindy, thanks for sharing this great, great Alaska adventure experience that folks can have with us on America Outdoors Radio. You're welcome, John. I just wanted to say one more thing. If people do call me for to see if I have availabilities, the best way to reach me is on my cell phone, which is 907-398-8834. All right, and we're going to give that phone number out again. That's 907-398-8834. That's 907-398-8834 for Cindy Smith at River Haven Cabins. The Caddis Game Changer Breathable Waders are going to change the way you fish. You've always counted on Caddis Waders to keep you warm and dry through the years, and Caddis never lets you down. Now comes the Game Changer. It's the same tough durability and the addition of a zippered hard pouch pocket that opens up to become a work shelf. Now you can change accessories on the water for maximum flexibility. Look for Caddis Game Changer Breathable Waders wherever quality fishing products are sold or online at caddiswaders.com. Looking to book an Alaska cast and blast you'll always remember? Brad Stewart with Alaska's Boardwalk Lodge has the details. From the 15th of September to the 15th of October, we will be casting for the largest silvers of the season. They can top 15 to 20 pounds. And we will be blasting ducks, including mallards, pantails, and teal. Find out more at BoardwalkLodge.com. That's BoardwalkLodge.com for a great cast and blast. Welcome back to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and this portion of the show is brought to you by Northwest Sportsman Magazine. It's the monthly magazine covering fishing, hunting, boating, and more throughout the great Northwest. Look for it at a newsstand near you. Speaking of the Northwest, we are heading to Tacoma, Washington to chat with Tyler Anderson with Tacoma Boat Sales. They sell boats, they service boats, and they service Honda Outboard Motors as well. Tyler, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks a lot. So, Tyler, you, sir, are a rare breed indeed because you are a master technician when it comes to Honda Motors. So let's talk about how rare that is. How many master technicians are there for Honda in the western United States? Currently, I am the only one. Every manufacturer has a different process as far as creating that master technician plaque. There's going to definitely be a lot more Yamaha. They've had that going a lot longer. But Honda hasn't, and their tests were pretty tough. It took me twice, and you had to fly to Texas both times. And the first time, I had to turn away and go back. And second time, of course, I made it through. But uh, it's pretty tough, and it's it's a hard task that takes years of uh, schooling that you have to go to, usually out of state. So it takes a while. Got to, uh, you know, drive far, fly far, to go take tests, to do all the classes, of course have the hands-on experience, and then pass a test. It's also just a lot of experience. So here's a question for you, Tyler. What can you do as a master technician that folks at the local boat dealership that sell Honda Motors can't do? Well, most of the time, uh, the master technician thing, again, just takes time to do, and it's harder to keep people, you know, in a shop to keep that going. But Basically, tearing a motor down and putting it back together, you know, heavy-duty troubleshooting. I mean, these things can go haywire. Of course, they're pretty high-tech machines. You know, it's not like the car industry where everybody just comes in, they plug their computer in, and it tells them X, Y, Z, and they do it. We have so many variables on a boat that uh, it really is a tougher situation. And so just by having that experience gives me that much more ability in that sense. But mainly it's the higher, harder tasks that I tend to do, even for Honda themselves. Uh, replacing blocks, replacing heads, replacing things. Most technicians can do. The cool thing about Honda is it doesn't happen very often. So these are not in the shop very often for major problems. So most technicians, most shops 
don't really need to worry about really technical removal applications and, and replacing things and the, the harder jobs. Because the engines are so good and they last so long and they're built so well, we just don't get as many. So it's easier for shops not to have a master technician. And then obviously with me in the area, that's where most go. So when things really go haywire, Honda tends to send them here. And I was going to ask that question. Uh, most folks that come to you, are they referred by other boat dealers up and down the West Coast? Or are they referred by Honda itself when they call the big corporate number? Well, they're going to give them, the, there's a problem line. I mean, there's the tech lines at Honda. And yeah, if it's a basic problem, a lot of times they can get people through. But most of the time they'll just give them, hey, here's your options as far as technicians out there. And if it's a real one that keeps coming back, then they tend to send them to the shops that have the techs. And I'm not the only shop that has good techs in it. Uh, there's always places to go, but yeah, they'll, they'll definitely send people my way when it comes to the harder jobs. Um, again, like I said, most of the time, problems are pretty minimal and they're fairly easy to fix. And so it's not necessary. But, you know, you know, when people do their homework, a lot of times they do come here just because I've done it the most. So here's one last question for you. In terms of customers that you've helped out that have brought their motors to you, uh, what's the furthest away one has come with their Honda motor to get repaired? Uh, I have customers in Alaska, of course, that things have come down. Uh, they've shipped motors down to me that have sunk and things like that from Alaska that have had problems. I've flown to Alaska. You know, uh, Marshall Islands has a good customer of mine, and I get stuff from them. So that's wow. Far away. Um, but, you know, there are still, of course, other continents have other places to fix them all. But I've, I've, I guess uh, the Marshall Islands will be the farthest I've ever had something come. All right, Tyler, we've got to go. But, folks, if you have a Honda motor on your boat, and your local dealer can't fix it, consider calling Tyler Anderson at Tacoma Boat Sales because he is the only master technician for Honda in the entire western United States. The website to go to to find his number and more information, TacomaBoatSales.com. That's TacomaBoatSales.com. Tyler, thanks for spending some time with us today on America Outdoors Radio. All right, John, keep boating, buddy. Next on America Outdoors Radio, we're taking you to the gem state. That's right, Mountain Home, Idaho. What are you going to find there? Fish Fighter Products. They make products designed for hard core heavy water anglers and places like the snake river in hell's canyon or the big waters of columbia river with us here to tell you more about the products that he makes is the owner chuck chicarelli chuck welcome to the show great morning john so chuck fish fighter products uh we're going to talk about the rod racks you make but you make more than that don't you oh absolutely you know when you opened up by saying we make products for heavy water you know that's uh kind of an understatement. It, I think there's a lot of anglers out there, especially in the circles that I run with, that are really hardcore, meaning I, I don't think average fishermen know what it's like to go out on the Columbia and be pounding waves for mile after mile or running uh, Hell's Canyon where your boats are just taking a pounding and your equipment takes a pounding. And, and there really wasn't anything on the market that was really designed for that type of angler. Uh, you know, a few years back, I put my boat in at Lewiston, Idaho, and we took it out in Astoria. And you learn a lot when you have a boat on the water for 500 miles with no way home. Oh, yeah. You just really see what holds up and what doesn't. And, you know, our products are really designed around the hardcore fishermen. We like to say that the people that buy our products don't look at the weather before they go fishing. You know, they just say, we're going, and, and they go. I do a lot of sturgeon fishing, and people say, you know, what's the key to catching sturgeon? And I said, well, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true indeed. And and by the way, folks, great year to go sturgeon fishing on the Columbia, especially this summer. And it's always a good time to go sturgeon fishing on the Snake River, especially if you want to catch some real big ones. A, a silly question for you here, Chuck. Do you really need rod racks for travel? I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, you see some people that, that stow them on the sides. I see some people that just kind of throw them on the floor in the back or, or lean them up against the railing, though I've seen some bad endings, too. You know, do you need a rod rack? No. Can you throw your rods on the floor? Can you bundle them up and put them in the corner of the boat? Absolutely. You know, the difference is, is do you want to be great at what you're doing? And, you know, my particular boat, I have a 23-foot precision well jet boat. I have 42 rod holders. And when people first see me, they're like, what the heck are you doing? But then when you really dissect it, you know, I have uh, around the engine cover, I have 12 rod racks. So if four of my friends go fishing with me, most 
serious fishermen bring at least three rod. And, you know, you can stack them right there. And then when we get out on the water, we move them up on top of the roof. And everybody's rod is out of the way when you're casting. Uh, they're easy to access, you know, and we're running these really high dollar rods. You don't want them all bundled together. It, it's just a choice. It's, diff- it's just like being a professional mechanic. Can you take all of your tools and dump them into a box on the floor? Absolutely. But that's not how the professional rolls, right? The professional mechanic's going to have all of his tools laid out, organized, and everything's based on efficiency. There's quite a few bass fishermen buying our products. And uh, one of the guys stopped by the other day on his way to a tournament, and he said, you know, Chuck, to be successful on the bass tournament, it's cast after cast. It's getting the most cast in per day, and everything is based on efficiency. And so, you know, we designed our rod racks around that. Chuck, you do have a way with words. I appreciate that. Now, folks, I'm just going to tell you, these are not cheap rod holders. These are premium and well-built rod holders that you're going to want to have on your boat. But I do have one last question before we go. We're already running out of time. You have angled rod racks, straight rod racks. Why one over the other in terms of an angler making a choice for his boat? Well, you summed it up. It's we wanted to give you the choice. You know, if, uh, if you're a little more price sensitive, we have a fixed angled rod rack. You can face your rods rearward or you can face them going forward. I really like our pivoting rod rack and that you flip a lever and the rod racks will lean rearward when you're fishing and then when you're traveling you just flip the lever and fold them forward and it gives you lots of different choices so the the rods are always where you want them all right we have got to go but folks if you want to get some really well-built racks for your fishing rods and lots of other products that are going to hold up under the toughest heavy water conditions go to fishfighterproducts.com the website again fish fighterproducts.com. They've got everything you're looking for. Chuck, thanks for telling us about this on America Outdoors Radio. Absolutely, John. Thanks for having me. If you consider yourself a hardcore fisherman who takes pride in being the first person on the water and the last one off, Fish Fighter products were designed for you. We make products for the relentless fishermen who know that big fish are caught by those who put in the work. With our relentless series tackle trays, rocket launcher rod racks, and breakaway river anchors, you'll spend more time chasing the fish, not your gear. Designed and built right here in the USA, Fish Fighter products won't let you down. Gear up at fishfighterproducts.com. Do you own a Honda outboard motor? Is your usually reliable motor got a problem that your local dealer can't fix? Then consider contacting Tyler Anderson at Tacoma Boat Sales. Tyler is the only Honda outboard motor certified master technician in the entire western United States. Contact him through his website at TacomaBoatSales.com. That's TacomaBoatSales.com for Tyler Anderson, your western U.S. Honda master technician. Tillamook Bay is considered the greatest fishing experience on the west coast for fall Chinook salmon and winter steelhead, and Dungeness crab is plentiful. Five major rivers connect with the ocean on the Tillamook coast. It's not unusual to snag a 40 to 50 pounder. Go out in a boat or stand on a riverbank or dock, try fishing from a dory boat, and experience the thrill of a beach launch and landing. Use spinners, sand shrimp, or salmon eggs to lure them. The fish will line up to grab your bait. Go to tillamookcoast.com backslash fishing to find guides and places to stay. Rad Power Bikes is an electric bike manufacturer offering direct-to-consumer pricing on powerful premium electric bikes. Because they sell direct to you, the consumer, you won't see the large retail markup that would be present if you were buying from a third party or a dealer. Ensuring you're always getting a performance e-bike at a fraction of the cost. Visit RadPowerBikes.com or call 1-800-939-0310 to learn more about their models or to place an order. Join Rad Power Bikes in jump-starting the electric bike revolution today. DEZ Tactical Match Grade AR Rifles are precision built to provide guaranteed sub MOA accuracy. Here at DEZ, we believe in guarantees backed by data. That's why every rifle we build is live fire tested for accuracy and sent with original test target. Add in our manufacturer's lifetime warranty and you can count on your DEZ rifle for a lifetime of performance. See a full list of our rifles, parts, and accessories at DEZTactical.com. DEZ Tactical, upping the expectations of what an AR rifle should be. 
If you carry concealed, how do you carry your backup magazine? On your belt? Loose in your pocket? Not at all? Snag Mag is the solution. It's the original concealed pocket magazine holster that looks like you're carrying a pocket knife. Concealed in plain sight and designed for a fast reload, you can be confident your backup ammo is exactly where you need it, when you need it. Find your holster today at snagmag.com. That's snagmag.com because there's no such thing as extra ammo. Welcome back to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We've got a lot of fishing-related news for you. And this portion of the show is brought to you by California Sportsman Magazine. It's the monthly magazine that covers all the fishing, the hunting, and other outdoors activities within the Golden State. Look for it at a newsstand near you. Are you a bass angler? Well, here's a question for you. How do you hold that bass out of the water? If you're like me, along with countless other bass fishermen and even tournament pros, you lip them. That's right, you put your thumb inside that lip, you kind of hold it up with the rest of your fingers. I mean, it works just great. However, we may be doing it all wrong. That's the word from Daryl Bauer, writing for Nebraska Land in an article that appeared in the Fishing Wire this week. And Daryl's not alone. Texas Parks and Wildlife, like Daryl, recommend, especially with bigger bass, not only hold them by the lip, but hold them horizontally. Hold them by the belly, too. Because when you're holding them by the lip, two things can happen. You can potentially break their jaw, and you know... Fish are designed to be horizontal in the water, not straight up and down. All that weight's going somewhere. It's not good for the fish. So hold them with two hands, by the lip and also by the belly, before you get that nice photo and let them go. Let's turn our attention to rare fish. Are you one of those guys or gals who's always trying to catch something different and new? I am. Recently, I've been trying to catch a grass pickerel where I live in the Pacific Northwest, where they are a very rare fish indeed. I haven't caught one yet, but my best friend and angling partner Rusty Johnston did reel in something else the two of us had never seen before last week. A tench. That's right, a fish called a tench that weighed north of two pounds, and we found out that it fights really good. Want to know about what that is? Well, just Google tench and you'll find out. Getting back to rare fish you've probably never caught before, I've got another one for you. It's an albino catfish. You heard me right, an albino channel catfish. Wyoming Game and Fish just stocked 2,500 channel cats in Sloan Lake, located in the state capital of Cheyenne, and one of the catfish found in the stocking tank was a very rare albino channel cat. It's not exactly trophy size right now, but give it a few years and it might make for an interesting piece of taxidermy to hang on your wall. Another rarity, which unfortunately is not so rare now and is becoming a real problem, is the lionfish found off the coast of Florida. Fisheries managers are trying to remove this invasive species, and one way they are doing so is through a contest called the Florida Lionfish Challenge. Again, with credit to the fishing wire, here's how it works. You need to head out on the saltwater, Catch and keep 25 or more lionfish from now until Labor Day to enter the state lionfish challenge and be eligible to win prizes. Two ways to do it. You can do it as a diver or you can do it as a hook and line angler. Either way, whoever checks in the most lionfish will be crowned Florida's recreational lionfish king or queen. In my opinion, that's way more prestigious than being the high school homecoming king or queen. Heck, I think that's almost up there with being Mr. Universe or Miss America. All right, maybe not. But I bet wearing that crown or tiara around town will be quite the conversation starter. You can find out more about becoming Florida's Lionfish King or Queen for 2017 and the prizes you can win in the process by going to myfwc.com. That's myfwc.com. Once you're there, look for the link. And for our last interview today on America Outdoors Radio, we've got a legend for you. His name, Buzz Ramsey. He's been associated over the years with Lure Jensen, with Berkeley, and with Yakima Bait Company. And that is who he's representing today, that company. 
out of Granger, Washington, that produces lures used all over the world for trout, for walleye, for salmon, and a whole lot more. Buzz, it's a real honor to have you on the air. Oh, thanks very much, John. I appreciate it. So, Buzz, there's a lot of iconic lures that fall under the Yakima Bait Company profile. There's the flatfish, which I think every angler has used, the spinning glow, which I think every salmon angler has used, the little corky, famous among steelheaders, but perhaps the most famous lure of all is the iconic rooster tail spinner. I mean, that has been around a long time. What's the story about that lure that I think every trout angler owns? Well, and it's not just trout. It's, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the listeners that fish for bass uh, probably have used rooster tail for bass, too. But rooster tail has been around since the early 1950s. It's, uh, and it's an affordable spinner that really works. It's available in, like, 10 sizes and uh, over 100 finishes. And it has a, oh, I guess you could call it a willow leaf blade, but it's kind of a mid-blade in its shape. You know, it's not real big and round, and it's not real low profile. So it'll cast far because there's not a lot of drag with the blade. And you can crank it fast and search for fish, prospect for fish. And, and once you find them, you can slow down, and that blade will still work, and you can slow down and, and uh, maybe give a more enticing presentation to whatever kind of fish you're after. It features a hackle tail uh, on the back of it, a pulsating hackle tail, and that uh, that is something that fish really like. So rooster tail is... Uh, I mean, this lure has been around since the early 1950s. One thing I'm reminded of, the, the inventor of it was really Howard Warden, whose father founded the company. And when they first came out with this spinner, they didn't know what to call it. And, and they were kind of calling it, they'd kind of nicknamed it the Holiday Special, but they knew that wasn't the real name, you know, or what wasn't going to be the ultimate name. Anyway, they went over to the Lake Washington near Seattle to the hydroplane races. And they watched those hydroplane races, and they watched that big rooster tail coming off the you know that the hydroplanes throw off uh, when they're going through the water, and uh, they said, that's it, we're going to call it Rooster Tail. <laughs> that's how the Rooster Tail got its name. That is a great story. I never knew that. You know, I, I have used Rooster Tail since I was a kid, and I love the fact that they kind of come in, well, for lack of a better word, colors that kind of match the hatch. In other words, black body with a chrome blade or a brown body with a gold blade, very popular offerings. One thing I never liked about the original Rooster Tail, though, was that you always had to kickstart it, so to speak, when you started your retrieve. But there's several variations of the Rooster Tail now where you don't have to do that anymore. The vibrant rooster tail in particular and they just work fantastic buzz well actually that hard starting of some of the blades was only was unique to just a couple of the sizes and we've since fixed that actually the shaper die that makes the blades uh, on those a few of the sizes have just a little bit of the wrong shape on them and so we've adjusted that so they all spin real quick now right right out of the box so so anglers can be assured that they're going to get the the maximum vibration and uh, and action out of the lure so what you're telling me there, Buzz, is that I probably need to go shopping again and stop digging out those old rooster tails I've had since the 1970s? That, that's it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> the new is good. Okay, Buzz. One other lure I want to talk about here, which I use with great success this spring for trout, is the Vibric rooster tail. It sure works, I'll tell you that much. That Vibric rooster tail is, you know, there's several different models of rooster tail. Of course, the original rooster tail is uh, by far the the most popular, but the Vibric Rooster Tail is the second most popular in the lineup. And it's got an inline blade and uh, spins instantly. It has the the hackle, uh, you know, same hackle as is on the, the regular Rooster Tail. And uh, th- those babies just work. It, it's a little unique in that the body of the, of the lure on the Vibric Rooster Tail, it, it's keeled. So it reduces line twist. That body won't, you know, if you reel it real fast, well, the body will will roll over, you know, and contribute perhaps to some amount of, of line twist. But for the most part, at least with a slow to medium speed retrieve, the body keels, and therefore it helps reduce line twist. Folks, it really does work, too. And I'll give you an example. I was down at the Quincy Lakes in central Washington right after one of the lakes iced off in March. And there was about five or six of us. And we were all tossing spinners and spoons. And I was using one of these rooster tails, a vibrant rooster tail spinner. And I was out fishing everybody four to one. And folks, trust me, 
It wasn't me. It wasn't the angler. It was the lure. They work. Where can folks find out more about, well, the rooster tail and other offerings from Yakima Bait Company? I'm guessing there's a website we should steer them to. Yep, just go to yakimabait.com. They're all shown there. Rooster tails are pretty available out there with, with the dealer base across the country. You know, Walmart carries them, other retailers, a lot of the local retailers that are, they all, they all carry rooster tail. So, you know, if you're a trout guy, black or brown, like you mentioned, if you're a bass guy, hey, white uh, one, or, or a yellow color might, uh, might, might be better. It's the rooster tail. It's an iconic lure from Yakima Bait Company. Find out more at yakimabait.com or just go to your local sporting goods store or your department store in the sporting goods section. They've been around for a long time, and the reason why is they work. Stock up now and catch some fish this summer. Buzz, always a pleasure. Thanks a lot, John. We've got to go, but if you missed part of this show, you can hear it on our website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. You can also tune in on WRVO Radio, an internet station dedicated to outdoors programming. Simply go to renovioloutdoors.com, and you can always find America Outdoors Radio on YouTube and on Podbean. I hope you are blessed in the week ahead, and I also hope you get out there for some fun on the water and in the field. Remember, it's your country and your outdoors. Yeah.